<laughs> Tell me about your role. You are involved with Peanut Press. Mm-hmm. Uh, so are you, did you found that or were you brought in involved or like where did, where did that start? I mean, it's, it was a very informal arrangement. It was kind of over lockdown. Um, Tommy, who runs the Peanut Press Cafe, uh, I think there was a day where we were kind of bored. Was there anything going on? And uh, I wanted to come in. I was like, "There's no jobs left. What do we do?" <laughs> but let's start a press. Um, so we started a press. Uh, we didn't know what to publish, so we published my poetry. Love that. Um, bought a bought a riser printer. Um, built a, a weird little mezzanine office in the corner of the cafe. Uh, got some book binding tools, and then yeah, kind of put together a, a, our first pamphlet, which was which was mine. And I guess I. We we kind of have quite um, it is quite informal, so we kind of just do what we each have time to do or, or, or good at doing. So Tommy's Tommy's I think a much better editor than I am, um, uh, and so he a lot of the the editing is him, um, but I do most of the sort of printing, typesetting, mm. um, bookbinding, um, a lot of the sort of actually putting the thing together into a physical product yeah. and, and uh, um, I think now I need to start doing a bit more like marketing and, and salary man stuff, you know? <laughs> <laughs> well, that's, yeah, that's the struggle, isn't it? I mean, like just in, it's all really boring. Yeah. Well, well, I mean, it's interesting that because I feel with, with books and things, especially these days, I feel there's such a tendency to almost mythologize them, you know, beyond being just like actual, I feel like people forget that there's the science of book binding. Yeah, you know what I mean, and they and they forget they kind of see books as almost as like magical object, but actually there's a lot more going on. Yeah, you know? I think that work, the work that it takes to get from the the written material to the actual book, a lot of that is very much obscured from from everyone's sort of mm. uh, outlook or vision. And so there's this idea that the hard bit is the writing, which I guess there is the hardest bit, obviously. For sure, yeah. But there's other difficult things going on, like when you're typesetting something, it's like there's no space for this this sentence that this writer has arranged so beautifully. Right. It's for it on my page. What do I do with that? <laughs> and was um, has this been like a, a a learning curve for you then over lockdown? Learning all about this was this or was there any of this aware? Were you aware of any of these kind of like? Um. So all the typesetting stuff, I was I've kind of had like a kind of underlying interest in graphic design and sort of um nice things in general, mm. like nice design. Um. And so all the typesetting and stuff, I kind of knew a little bit what I was doing. I had to learn a bit more about specifically doing poetry and 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 just looked at a lot of things, looked at a lot, a lot of the ways things were typeset and kind of what was wrong with them. Because <laughs> uh, there's a lot of there's a lot of bad typesetting around. <laughs> um, so it's quite good to kind of look at things and be like, no, that doesn't work. This is what I would do. And then trying to see how that works and see a lot of the time what I would do is also terrible. Um, and so kind of the book binding stuff was new to me, but my twin sister's quite good at all that stuff. So I was messaged her and I was like, How, what, what, what do I do? Mm. Um, and it, it kind of, uh, I don't know, it, I found it quite, it's quite therapeutic, mm. quite nice to, to sort of just sit and put things together, uh, especially now that everything we're doing is kind of like this online through video on a screen. It's nice to be able to have that sort of physicality and, and create something, hundred um, percent, yeah, and then do that again two hundred times. <laughs> so, um, so that's that's a good point though. This these are sort of hand. So I actually have the, the two pamphlets from Peanut Press. So this is your lovely one, memory stance, and this is Theophanes. Mm -hmm. uh, and these are these are all hand bones. So these aren't like yes. mass produced or mecha on a mechanical yeah. basis. If you get two, if you get two two of them together of the same one, you can tell because of the slight slight differences. Uh huh. Like in, in terms size, of sizes, different yeah. hole placement. Yeah. Um, it's all close enough that when all, there's loads of them, it looks the same. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, that, that's that's kind of I suppose part of the the charm or the the specialness, like you yeah. were saying during. Also, lockdown. it's yeah, it's it's not it's not um, like it's still the same thing. Yeah, it's a millimeter bigger, <laughs> or I mean, obviously, I aim to have them exactly the same, but for all 
my best intentions, they're not going to be the same. Has the has this changed how you read books as well? Are you just now even more aware of like the materiality of a book? Or I think so. I think because well, now whenever I open a book, I will always notice the paper and like the typeface and and the way it's the things that I would have noticed before mm. that might have made me think something about a book or troubled me, but now I get why a bit more. For sure, yeah. Um, so like yesterday, I was in I was in Typebringer, um, taking um, Miles down with his his pamphlets, and um, uh, there was a copy of this Breadfruit Kingdom. It's a uh, anthology of Jamaican poetry. I didn't buy it because I didn't have enough money to buy it. But when I opened it, there was a really nice sort of like uh, rag piece of paper in the front that had a really lovely kind of texture and um, uh, had a sort of that was had a moment of being like, oh, this is lovely, <laughs> you know. But this is just really nice and i can tell a lot more now why a book kind of feels nice mm. um, and it always really annoys me now when there's like brilliant writing in a really badly made book for um, sure yeah so i feel like the sort of the skill sets of the people putting it together didn't quite match up mm. uh, and so i think i i kind of put a pressure on myself to make sure that everything that we make really does 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 a uh, kind of justice to um um the writing was something I think um, I think my, one of my favorite pamphlet publishers, uh, um, Bitter Melon, they've got really lovely like the the pamphlets are just incredible like pieces of art, um, like proper sort of art objects, um, even before you you get to the the poetry. Mm. Yeah, well, I mean, I feel there's definitely that pivot to. I don't know, I think of books like, you know, Nicola Barker's Happy or, you know, House of Leaves is an example. You know, I feel like there's definitely a big trend in writing to really think about the book as an object. Because it's funny, you, you, I remember I was listening to, um, I think it was the Edinburgh Writers Conference in 2012, and everyone is so apocalyptic because e-books have just arrived. And everyone <laughs> is just... And it's just absolutely convinced that, like, it's an apocalypse. And obviously, yeah. the, almost the opposite happened. It's almost like there was a the priorities of the of the physical book almost yeah. came out more and you, so you have kind of works that kind of deal with that uh, with the material in an interesting way i feel yeah i guess it forces it forced that sort of cuz like the the sort of growth of 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 ebooks kind of forces us to to really think about why people should have books or why why books are better mm -hmm, 100% they are. Yes. Um, and i think they are but that's not like a I'm not saying they are. Um, it's like a, a it kind of forced us to kind of really think about, okay, we actually need to do something with this. Like rather than put the book out, there has to be something to it mm. that, that makes it the book. 100%. Than, yeah. but, um, and having that sort of distinction uh, kind of pushes you into into really engaging with like the book arts and the, the kind of material um, that the words are, are printed on. Yeah. I feel, I feel like when people talk about the death of X, what they all, you know, like the death of, you know, which is, people are always saying that, aren't they? I always feel like it's more, it's almost like the self, a self-consciousness of whatever X is. It's like the death of the novel, right? There's things that that's always been talked about, the death of the novel, when actually it's a self-awareness of what the novel is or where it's located in the culture, I feel, which is actually kind of more freeing in some ways than... I don't know, novel being the social unity bond thing as it was in like Victorian times yeah. or whatever, you know. Um, so sort of, well, keeping on the idea of pamphlets, I mean, where do you think, how, how would you describe their importance in sort of like literary bubbles and spheres? Like the importance of a pamphlet as being, big question, <laughs> you know, but for, because for, um, obviously a pamphlet is, uh, in very simple layman's terms, sort of like a mini collection. It's not, it's like the EP is the, the closest <laughs> analog, right? But I mean, like, um, is there more to it in your opinion? Well, I, I guess the thing for me about pamphlets is that it's always, when, whenever there's a really good pamphlet, it would only work as a pamphlet, right? Mm. Um, it wouldn't work as a whole collection. Uh, well, it would, but it would just be incredibly difficult to do that. <laughs> yeah. But there's, there's a sort of, a sort of, um, um, air about all the poems that brings them together much better than I think in a longer collection. Um, cause if in a longer collection, it could become tiresome or, or kind of things become a bit contrived and it's a bit sort of 
starts relying on some tropes or whatever. Mm. But when you have a pamphlet, there's like a, a short burst or like a a, a a few poems that really delve into something and really kind of explicate a viewpoint or uh, interrogate some sort of idea or put across a certain set of images that really work together. And so I guess on a on a more in a in a sort of general uh, sense of of how that works in sort of sharing our expression, I think it's it's a nice way to have in the first place for us who haven't published much to kind of give a sense of what we do, mm. um, but also to have that ability to really say something about something specific and share that with people. Um, because I think I, I, in in um, what's a good example of this? Something like um, Ross McCleary's pamphlet. Oh yeah, uh-huh. I always get it wrong. I think endorse it me, wrong. you cowards. Endorse me, you cowards. Yeah, <laughs> that's I think that's the like the way that uses form throughout the pamphlet mm. and the way the poems connect to each other, both in theme but also literally. There are things running through each page that link up to make other poems. Yeah. Um, that's the kind of I think that's a really great example of a uh, a pamphlet that does something only a pamphlet could do. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because if that ran through a full collection, it would be a different kind of. Oh yeah, and and I think it would kind of lose a bit of its um, immediacy. Impact. Yeah, and immediate. Yeah, immediacy, yeah. and especially with the the point uh, points he was making in that pamphlet, it really needed to be immediate. I think, For and sure. it did that really well, and yeah. it, it just hit you as soon as you you got into it, um, and it's a sort of thing that. Uh, it's a bit like a like a film like you sit down and you watch it all mm. you go through the entire pamphlet and then you have this sort of these building blocks that that lead up to a sort of conclusion yeah that's a good point actually yeah because i mean um i think it was edgar Allan Poe that was talking about the short story as being you know his unique attribute is that you read it in one go and the story mm. is kind of consumed well for the most part um while i suppose other longer books are kind of more marathons but i suppose pamphlet is kind of a one yeah um one read through well um so, so in regards to your pamphlet then what's the specific mm. thing you're delving into would you say i i think the the i feel like it changes every time anyone asks me this <laughs> but i feel like um in general it's it's about sort of the way i deal with memory and dreams and how they kind of intertwine and how that then affects how i engage with the world mm. um, because all the poems are based on like very specific instances in my life. So there's one about walking through a cemetery on the way home from school, another one about um, laying beside someone in bed, or and then another one about when um, I was telling my friend a story while passing a, a convenience store um, and realised that I was just making things up. <laughs> <laughs> and so they're all things of, 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 of from from those sort of memories but kind of try to project them into a sort of more dreamy mm. dreamy state of, of uh, kind of trying to keep the the experience trying to relay the experience or the feeling um of what was happening in that memory without turning it into a story if that makes sense yeah no totally for sure <laughs> yeah well, um, I mean... so it was, but for me it was useful because because um i just don't i have really bad sleep and so it was useful kind of while i was like i'd be in and out of sleep maybe dreaming or, or just thinking about things and it was useful to kind of get that down but then it would be in like the editing process or in the daytime that I'd actually work through it um so I think the, the process of doing it um was for me maybe the most important bit because it's um it kind of helped me uh figure out how I feel not in terms of how I feel about things but the way in which I feel things mm. um, and so I kind of wanted to get that across in the in the the, the poetry mm-hmm. yeah the pamphlet is dream analysis that's interesting or maybe not analysis as such but um maneuvering through that i suppose so how from one well how long did this kind of take i suppose to come together was it kind of a rush was it quite slow mediated kind of um, did the bombs exist individually and then came together so i kind of i kind of um had the I'd, the poems in the pamphlet I'd been writing for a couple of years, I think. Mm-hmm. Um, 
some of them were were one of them was written like a week before it was published um and the, right. the cemetery one i think was written what, what year we're in 2020 now um yeah. <laughs> like end of 2018 i okay. started writing it it was a whole different poem obviously but like it's kind of traces began it so yeah a couple of years um and i had and then i noticed i had a set of poems that kind of explored the same themes uh a few of them uh were written as a set but then the others were kind of put it in mm. uh, and some of them after i'd put the poems together i realized i needed some like i needed to, to say something like the first poem i feel like it was really necessary to have that to sort of open it out and mm-hmm. i set a sort of kind of set a scene a bit of exposition um and so I, I wrote that kind of in response to the rest of them um right. a week or two before before it was published um <laughs> and then when tommy was like hey do you want to publish something i was like yeah cool um, and we kind of worked through it and he would kind of be like i think you need to do this you need to do that whatever um and it was a really nice sort of it was a really lovely editing process mm. um, and I think we both quite enjoyed it, which yeah. I think is the most important bit. Um, yeah, and then putting it together didn't take, it took a lot longer than we thought it would because the printer was just really annoying me. But, um, <laughs> but it worked in the end. And, um, they never say that in the biographies, do they? It's like, you know, it, t- it took him a while because the printer was just like malfunctioning, I, you know? <laughs> I have to use a printer. Yeah. <laughs> um, so I suppose going back to Peanut Cafe, then is that always that's always had a literary bent to an extent, or has it? I yeah, suppose? well, it's so it's 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 quite. Um, well, on the Instagram it says Arts Cafe and Pizza Place, mm. um, which I find quite funny. But um, <laughs> so when when they they opened June last year, um, and I think Tommy's always really wanted it to become a sort of like a place where if someone has something they want to do kind of like creatively, there'll be the, the sort of the resources or the, the, the kind of, uh, everything you need will be there. Right. Mm. Um, and so it's always had a sort of kind of artistic, event, um, particularly before with music, but, um, I started hosting the poetry nights there last August. Um, and so we'd have one third Friday of every month. Um, and hopefully in a few months time we'll be able to do that again yeah, so fingers crossed not, yeah. not, plan on, not plan on anything but at some point um let's do that again um but i think it's become a lot more sort of literary because mm. uh, we have like a a, a a big shelf of books for sale and then we've got like a library shelf of people to borrow mm. um which is mostly my books <laughs> <laughs> and then uh there's the tommy's shelf by the by the counter um which is kind of his books people can come and read um we're publishing stuff we always used to have sort of like writers groups and, and sort of a lot of uni um magazines and stuff have mm. their events there and lots of like theater groups and stuff come to come to events um and so there's always that sort of i mean because tommy's a tommy's a, a writer as well so he he's very much i was going to say on the top of the, the cafe you have this really long poem <laughs> and it's just kind of like yeah. circling yeah. all around yeah, yeah, yeah. um yeah there's like things written on the walls everywhere and yeah um, random you'll just find random pieces of papers and corners and books everywhere and um yeah yeah so it's it's nice um it's kind of taken on a bit more of a sort of literary literary vibe mm. someone asked us if we're a, if they're, if we're a literature cafe huh. um i don't really know what that meant but a salon maybe, maybe i don't know <laughs> <laughs> when we calling ourselves a salon that's, yeah that's the thing if you call yourself that you've kind of failed at what yeah, a salon's meant to do isn't it yeah um, but, well, <laughs> I suppose, <laughs> well um i mean it's interesting you bring up that because um i know that you've done sort of research as it were quote unquote into um how do I describe it? Redescribe what your dissertation was on. Like, basically, the social networks between mm-hmm. Parisian writers, right? So, I suppose mm-hmm. is inter- and which I suppose is also an undervalued, like, just the day to day moments of creative. Yeah, I mean, like, it was really fun. I was kind of figuring out how I can write about poetry in my sociology degree. Right. Um. So yeah, I did some some sort of looking at the the social context of 
it was mostly about MSSF um, about his social context and historical context and mm. it was really fun that kind of really brought me into kind of the idea that all of these grand things it is just mates having a laugh or mates having fun yeah. mates trying to do something or uni students trying to be radical yeah um because all the things that, that we'd read by him is like a lot of his earlier work he was just kind of in paris mm. or with his mates and it was a really fun a really nice interview um with him he talks about uh leopold Senghor, and he's like um oh yeah i got to uni and i met this guy leopold and um he looked at me and he was like hey you're my freshman now <laughs> and they would just hang out and read together and, and talk about class and <laughs> And it just it just sounded really like it's very ordinary. Mm. Like this is someone who's one of the, the great poets of the 20th century. It's just very ordinary. He just lived life like anyone else. And then became, became a big, big yeah. leader, but he was just living his life. Yeah. Do you find that kind of empowering? Or not empowering, but kind of almost like, I don't know. I don't know. I feel like there's such a, a mythology with writers from that you have on the one hand, you have like, <laughs> state legislators of the world which is mm. a bit it's like all right okay but then on the yeah. other hand you have this kind of like oh we're just all so bad we're so bad to each other oh aren't we just so evil and i'm like well maybe we're just like in the middle like you know everybody else yeah. <laughs> you know what thing, I mean? the thing with, 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 there's there's this whole i don't know i feel like if we imagine like when we imagine writers we'll imagine like famous writers mm. like their lives mm. like going around talking to doing giving lectures and 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 hosting events and and writing in, in, in like nice little retreats and yeah. teaching workshops all over the world. Whereas like most writers, especially poets, we've got a day job. 100%. Yeah, hundred <laughs> like, yeah. percent. You do something else. You're not you're not gonna make you're not gonna gonna pay the bills writing poetry. Yeah. Um, unless you're like Caroline Duffy or someone like. Yeah. And even then, it's not like huge i don't know it's it's it's, it's just a it, it kind of reminded me that that we are just you just live and you write what you want to write and it kind of made me because before i used to be really like annoyed that i wouldn't annoyed at myself that i wouldn't like submit to things or mm. i wouldn't want to get published or whatever and now i'm just like it doesn't really it doesn't like who cares <laughs> I, I don't i don't like, i like to write because i like to write yes um, yeah, I suppose it's unlearning a lot of that stuff is quite important. Yeah. I think if someone wants to publish it, cool. Yeah, but I was, like, so I was talking to one of my friends about this, and, and they were talking about how there's this very sort of like uh, kind of like capitalistic European view of, of of writing and publishing, and we don't have a sort of tra- tradition so much of you just share stories with people. Mm. Yeah, you just kind of. There isn't that sort of like community orator sort of tradition um, where there is in some other cultures. And sort of a lot of our ideas about poetry tend to be quite kind of bourgeois. I don't know, mm. I don't know if that's the right word. Um, it's, it's something that's a bit like you do that if you have time. Sure, um, hobbyist, I suppose. Yeah. Which isn't true. Yes. And, and lots of us know it's not true. Um, but it's like that's a outside concern. Where in a lot of um, cultures, poetry is kind of like the the, the fundament of, of everything else. Mm. There's, there's a there's a saying in, in um, uh, Afghanistan, I think, where like the scientist the scientist could tell you two plus two is is four, and you question them, and the poet will tell you two plus two is five, and you believe it because huh. the poet is right, right? For sure, <laughs> they yeah. Uh-huh. Right. They tell you what's true. They're kind of the one who brings knowledge. Mm. Um, and I think kind of not thinking about poetry is something where you're writing to get published or, or you're writing to kind of try and share your work. Yeah, the marketplace nice of ideas. Kind of, yeah, it's kind of like trying to make that culture. Mm. Um, so, I think a lot of what I think I want to be trying to do is to, to kind of just help people share their work mm. in a, not in like a, sort of commodity way but mm. in like a hey i got some work like yeah more genuine i think yeah yeah and it's nice then to have kind of a establish a sort of community a, a better community this is a nice thing about running out of a cafe as well though because it is a, a, a quite a communal thing mm-hmm. yeah. like hopefully soon we'll have uh people doing all the different aspects of it just um a more collaborative thing mm. 
Um, yeah. Well, uh, talking of European capitalistic models, uh, Peanut Press have a new release. This is yes, the latest it, clip. Well, I, obviously, it's not. Uh, cap, well, anyway, it's. Uh, the, so, <laughs> what, what can you tell me about um, Theophanies by. Well, I'll tell you. Oh, my God. It's incredible in the first place. Um, that's, <laughs> that's a good start. Really good. Really good. It's a really. It was so much fun to, to edit because um, it went through actually quite wild changes. Um, mm-hmm. I really. I kind of. I think I really enjoy the way there's a rhythm to it all. Even when it's kind of really playing with with kind of me to inform, you still have that sort of beat to it, mm-hmm. um, and it really kind of works with what is being said in terms of uh, kind of the general themes of of kind of God, of mm-hmm. love God, um, things about kind of sexuality and and masculinity, and expressing that to people. And I think there's a lot of things about how um, one is kind of perceived in certain ways and how we perceive other things in a specific relation to the themes I mentioned before. Mm. Um, but I really like the way it, it, it kind of takes, um, a lot of it is written in a very clear meter, but then you'll get to bits where there's just words kind of scattered around and then things kind of interjected and you start reading in different ways and it really kind of draws you in and then plays with you a little bit, which is, which is mm. really fun. Um, but it's it's a, I I think it's it's a lot like a lot to read, uh, not in like a, a length wise, but just it's very sort of intense mm. um, and really kind of throws things at you, um, but in quite a, a gentle way, just because of the the rhythm to it. Yeah. But yeah, it's really it's really good, and the illustrations in it by there are illustrations. Yeah. Yeah, uh, by Rosalind Do Good, um, they're incredible. Um, yeah, they're really kind of kind of tender responses to to the to the poetry mm. and it also yeah. has uh, an epigraph from my intellectual queen <laughs> Simone Weil yeah 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 which yeah which is which is oh. always good it's um, a brilliant quote yeah uh, God gives himself to men either as powerful or as perfect it is for them to decide oh I love yeah, it I know she is great <laughs> she is great uh, oh. sorry no that's okay that's fine we should have we should have more um, ambient like sort of like I don't know I should have like some wind chimes <laughs> that I could put in the background or something. Um, so let's see what we got. Um, so you also you've done obviously you host the nights at Peanut you know, oh. Press. Um, where do you see your performance or your per- performer ness as uh, fits into this, or do you see yourself more as a writer and then the performing is kind of the the offshoot? No, I really love performing. Mm-hmm. Um, one of my favorite things to do. Yeah, it's so much fun just to get being on a stage or in front of people and kind of I don't know. As I love to see the way people respond to things. Mm. Um, I mean, it's horrible sometimes when when you're saying something and it feels like everyone's just staring in the space in front of them, and you're like, Shh, "What am I doing here?" <laughs> um, but when it when it's nice, it's really nice, and there's a like a rush, a rush that you get. That's like mm. I just love it. Um, but I guess I've kind of kind of stopped, not stopped, but I feel like I'm busy enough with other things. True. That yeah. I mean, as much as I want to get back to performing, and as much as I will when I can, I do have enough other things to do. Um, yeah, because I'm doing. I just there's no time. For, I have no time for 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 anything else these days. Right. So, <laughs> so I kind of it was all the press stuff and then masters and then work and mm. it's a lot of a lot a lot to do. Um, and I think it's kind of yeah. I really don't. I think this is another thing that's like I really just don't have time. Mm. Um, and I find myself going weeks and weeks without writing either and being like, wait. Oh yeah, like, I've got to do that. Yeah. <laughs> But not even like a writer's block or whatever. It's no, just, I just, you just don't, don't have the time. Yeah. I'll get home and I'll be like, I just want, I just want to watch Fresh Prince and sleep. Yeah. <laughs> so. Totally, totally, yeah. No, my Nintendo yeah. Switch has definitely become the coping mechanism for the the, the retail rush of, uh, of Christmas. Yeah. Uh, I've been looking at. I've just really just want to get like a PlayStation or something and just be mindless. Uh, so, <laughs> yeah, that's the other console I'm thinking of as well. Except that I think <laughs> the newest one's pretty expensive, but um. So, um, what, uh, if, 
feel free to be as vague as possible with this, but sort of what's uh, up next for Peanut Press Cafe and also your Peanut own Press. work, dare I ask? Oh. Well, I start my own work. There's oh. not much coming from my own work. Um, <laughs> I, I haven't really been, I don't know, I'm, I'm, I'm doing a, a few um, submissions mm-hmm. over the next week or so, hopefully, if I get them done. I mean, I always say I will and then forget and then time passes and then... Well, this this is a record and document of it. Yeah. So you got um, But yeah, hopefully we submit for a few things. Um, I'm doing a, a little project with a friend. Uh, they've done a film and I'm start, starting doing that just now. Um, and what else am I doing? Is that like a film poem? Uh, or more of a like, short of, film? Some egg phrases. Oh. Uh, but I'd... I, I don't know what I don't know how what it will end up being because mm. I haven't bought it yet really, but getting going on that it should be fun, um, and yeah I don't really I'm not really do I'm not I'm just doing um, press stuff I've been making a lot of notebooks which oh, yeah. is fun, um I've really got into that sort of bookbinding and, and things like that so um, the press though the press has got an exciting exciting uh, uh, early twenty twenty one coming we've got a few a few things in the works. Uh, uh, which I'm incredibly excited about. Three quite different things. Um, trying to move beyond just the poetry pamphlet mm. um, into a bit more mixed sort of form and some more artistic stuff like oh, yeah. visual arts. Uh-huh. Um, which would be fun. Um, yeah, but that's uh, nothing. Nothing to, to kind of tell you about specifically. But we have a few a few books coming out next year. That will be, they'll be very very good, um, very nice. I'm very excited to to get working on the the design and typesetting and stuff for, for when they're when they're finished editing. Um, Amazing. But yeah, Tommy and I, Tommy and I are busy, busy with things, and we're we're trying to, we really add the because the, with the riser printer, you, the drum you have to get a different drum for every color, right? Um, which is really expensive, mm. so trying to figure out how to how to afford things and hopefully we'll be making our own paper um making your own paper for, yeah for for books in the future um, how do you make your own so not not like buying it from a supplier but like just well we'll be buying the inside paper because we can't make that many sheets okay <laughs> right. the covers yeah because a friend a friend makes paper so okay. um wow. hopefully we'll get we'll get a, a little paper making studio sorted and um Re- using kind of the offcuts of our paper, uh-huh. so whenever I bind a book, I have to chop that the creep off at the end, and so we can use that to make um, new paper, mm. um, which should be fun. Uh, but yeah, trying to try, still trying to trying to get everything more sustainable, get more money to to pay artists a bit more. Mm. Uh, yeah, sweet. Yeah, um, I think that's a that's a grand place to to leave it on. Pretty yeah. fun, pretty good, and exciting. Nice, all three at once. Yeah. yeah. Mira, thank you so much for uh, chatting to me this morning. That's all right. Thanks for inviting me along. Yeah, of course. I hope you're doing all right in uh, the Lithgow. Yes. (laughs) Yes.